Carolyn Doobie here. What's the play for today? Well, today it's glitter. I'm going to create my own sort of painterly fun coloring page with glitter and a piece out of an old book. Now, why am I acting like a kid with glitter? Well, that's this month's theme for the Let's Play video series. This is the page from the Vintage Radio Diagram book that's going to be my guide for where my glitter is going to go. I'm going to trace around some of the shapes on here using this glue from the Art Glittering System. Now the thing that I like about this is it just has a fine tip to it for the glue. I'm sure there's something amazing about this glue that makes it perfect for glitter. I just don't know what it is. I know that it'll dry clear and then it comes out a fine tip. So for me, that's everything I need here to play with the glitter. So I've gone around some of the shapes and then what I'm going to do is grab one of the colors of glitter and then I'm just going to sprinkle it on anywhere there's wet paint. And I'm clearly doing it generously and liberally. Part of the reason is because it's just fun to shake out glitter. But another reason is I want to be sure that I get everything covered. Now this glitter isn't going to be wasted. I am going to dump all the excess glitter back into this tray. I'm going to flick it a little bit to release any loose pieces of glitter that are hanging on by static electricity. And then I'm going to take that glitter that's left in the tray and I'm going to dump it right back into the bottle. So this glitter lasts a very, very long time. Now glitter can give you a little touch of sparkle like it's doing now, or you can take it, well, all the way to the extreme and go a little overboard, which is what I'm going to do in this video because I love sparkle. Glitter, there's just something magical to me about glitter. And that's something that I really enjoyed watching anytime I'd pull out the glitter when I worked with my second graders because, I mean, glitter, it's just how oh, their eyes would light up and there was never enough glitter on something. They always wanted to put more and more and more on there and I totally agree with them. That is a great way to do glitter. So since this is all about acting like a kid, I am going to just barrage this thing with all sorts of glitter. Now, not just one color of glitter. I'm going to try and get a whole bunch of different colors on here. So I'm tracing some lines on here and you might say, you can't even really see where the glue is. Quite frankly, neither could I as I was doing this. I just know that when I sprinkle some glitter on it, it's going to show up everywhere that there was glue. I'm going to pick a different color of glitter and just sprinkle it right on top. That's one of the cool things about doing glitter is the colors really don't mingle and mix together once they're attached to the glue. So I'm just going to just liberally go right over what was already there. Don't have to wait for anything to dry. You know that's important to me with my patience issues. And I'm just going to get the next color on here. And after I'm all done, you know what? I'm not going to waste all this magical sparkle. I am just going to get it right back into the container. Now, if you don't have a cool little tray like this, then you can use a paper plate, a piece of paper, anything. Or if you're really talented, you can just directly get it back into the container. But I'm just not that talented when it comes to playing with glitter. Well, now that you know the process, apply glue, sprinkle with glitter, and repeat over and over again to increase the joy and happiness, I'm going to speed up the video here. One of the things that I found absolutely joyous about doing this is that with every color, I just became happier and happier and happier. That to me is the magic of glitter. It's almost like unicorns to me. This may not be clear to you so far, but there's actually no plan whatsoever with this other than draw with glue, sprinkle with glitter, involve the rainbow any way you can. That's as far as my plan goes. And guess what? It's play. I don't have to have a plan. That's one of the cool things that I rediscovered about play is you don't have to know what you're doing. You don't have to know where it's going to have fun and to play. I mean, when kids do it, they don't exactly know how it's going to turn out. They don't even question if they can do it or not. They just dive in and start doing it. I mean, after all, they are the masters of play. And this is just one of the ways that I've rediscovered how to let myself play because I'd totally forgotten how to do it when I became an adult. Now, I've got lots of the ways that I've rediscovered how to play over on the blog and with this video series called Let's Play. But really, truly, just about everything that I do is about play. I've got the free workshop permission to play. In my newsletter, there are downloadable goodies that are sparks of our inspiration for your play. So you've probably picked up that theme. Play shows up a lot with just about everything that I do. And loose glitter does not seem to have any kind of expiration date. So that pink glitter that I just used, that was from something my kids had, I mean, like 15 years ago. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to play with it. I am totally going to mix kitty glitter with art glitter because sparkle is sparkle. It doesn't matter the brand to me. What matters is that it sparkles. 
As I'm looking at this, I realize I'm kind of creating a sort of coloring page for myself. That I've got all these lines and things created with the glitter, and I want to add some more color with it. So I want to color within those lines. Well, or about in the lines. You know me, I'm not really going to stay within the lines. So I'm going to need to let this dry, but I also don't want to stop playing with the glitter. So at some point, I'm going to have to make the decision to stop and let all the glitter dry before I go on to the next step, which is all about getting even more color on there working with the glitter. The glitter's all dry now, so I'm going to bring in some watercolors and start loosely painting and coloring inside the different spaces. Now the cool thing for me about watercolor is that you can control how much color goes on there by how much water you add to it. And you've probably noticed the way that I'm coloring this in, I'm not exactly staying perfectly on those glitter lines. As a matter of fact, I can run the watercolor right on top of the glitter. It's not like this has to be precise. Now, could I make this precise if I wanted to do that? Absolutely, if I had some kind of strange urge to be very precise. And I say strange just because for me, that doesn't happen very often. What if you don't have watercolors? What can you do? Can you do the same kind of thing? Absolutely. Just take some acrylic paint and really water it down, and you can get a very similar kind of look. Now, I've been doing a lot with the blues, and the yellows, and the greens, and I'm really liking how they look together. But I'm also eyeballing that hot pink there, that magenta color in the palette. And I'm thinking, man, do I want to bring some of that in? The pink glitter that I used, it's not popping in the kind of pink that I really love. Now, it's still an awesome pink glitter, but I'm trying to decide if I want to bring in a bolder, brighter, darker pink. Well, that's starting to sound like I'm trying to plan, doesn't it? That's starting to sound like I'm getting contemplative about what color I want to use. What's really happening there is that my left brain is trying to control. It's trying to say, pick the right one, do the right thing. And the truth is, this is watercolor with some glitter on a piece of paper. I'm not going to justify why I want that beautiful magenta on here. There's no perfect reason for it. I don't have to prove how that's going to make it look better. The fact that I wanted to grab it and use it, that's good enough for me. And that's what play is all about. You don't have to justify what you're doing. You just have to get your stuff out and start playing. Now my left side, that left brain, it wants to know exactly what I'm going to do with this. How is this going to be practical? What are you going to use this for? All those kinds of questions. Well, here's my answer back to left brain. Well, I had fun making it, and that was the number one priority for me. But what else can I do with it? I might leave it the way it is. I might cut it up. I might use it in an art journal page. I might use it for collage. Or I might do something completely different with it. Who knows? Next time I come into the studio to play, I'll just see what happens. Well, thanks for joining me for today's play. If you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos, hit that subscribe button. And of course, if you know somebody that you think could use a little more fun and play in their day, I'd so appreciate it if you shared this video with them. And you can find more ways to rediscover how to play over on the blog at acolorfuljourney.com. Thanks so much for letting me be a part of your colorful journey.